Hey, welcome back to the Mobility Project. Today we're going to talk about getting ready for deadlifting. Um, specifically kind of looking at posterior chain musculature, length, capacity being in a good position. What I want to talk to you tonight about is when we see athletes typically struggling to be in a good position, we know that their structures are keeping them end range or they're working at the end range. If it's just a kind of a, a capsular restriction kind of thing or a, a tight piece of tissue, what we end up seeing is that the athlete ends up struggling to get into end range and has to make start to make kind of compromises. They start to play gasso breako with their tissues. They're really working hard against some of their passive structures, which means their internal resistance of the system goes up. One of the things that we like to think about is we'd like to keep the musculature of the of the system kind of in an ideal length tension relationship. As it starts to be end range, not only are you, not, are you weak or not only are you having positionally challenged in that end range, but you're not getting a lot of kind of contractile overlap of that actin or myosin. And so when those, con those kind of functional sarcomere, functional contracting units are end range, they don't have a lot of end, uh, overlap, and so they're really weak. So not only do we find that athletes who are struggling to get in a good position for something like the deadlift, not, uh, you know, they're challenged positionally, but they also are very weak at those end ranges, and that's where we see a lot of injuries happen at high velocity end ranges like sprinting. So one more reason why we want to have enough range and we need to train that stuff again. there. So, you know, that we do these analogs where we sit tall, belly is tight, I should be able to straighten both legs without loss of lumbar curve. And if you do this test for yourself, you should be able to straighten both legs without losing or feeling any segments move. And most athletes who are a little bit challenged in the posterior chain end up feeling like their back dumps or they're so comfortable surrounding their low spine or having one segment spine, uh, one segment of the spine move. If you ch lose one of those segments, we see segment on segment slipping, that's such a mechanism for common disc dysfunction or over tweak or facet dysfunction. So if you put your hand in the small of your back, belly is tight, you should be able to extend both legs without losing or changing any of that back relationship. Uh, you say, Kelly, I'm not sure how that relates. I can't get to here. Well, if we just flip that forward, it's basically the same position. And what we're after is can our athletes get into a good position, maintain this, and not lose or get comfortable in these positions. So to kind of work on this tonight, we're going to start with hip capsule. So when do I deadlift, stretch, mobilize? Well, if I can't get into a good position or express my uh, strength or my position because of my tight hips, then that's going to be a problem. So I would do this beforehand. If uh, if I've got good hip capsule range and good hamstring range, then this can be done afterwards. So first, I don't have a band tonight, so distraction. I'm in a hotel room at a coach's wedding. I'm going to really exaggerate the kickover tonight and hit this super exaggerated position. Then I'm going to go ahead and load all my weight through the, the femur, try to drive that through the back of my butt, and then hit into those corners. Don't collapse down. Really try to imagine sticking the leg out the back of the femur. Remember, we're trying to improve that position so we can improve uh, kind of mechanical advantage of the hip. That's one. I want you to spend two or three minutes in this position. And then number two tonight, let's go ahead and we're going to go after calves and we're going to go after the back. Or uh, So let's go ahead and flip down and let's go ahead and talk to leg straight posterior chain stuff. Remember, I should easily, if this is in the middle of my hip, I should be able to easily pull that leg straight past that wall if I have a normal range of motion. So if you keep this leg straight, you should be able to easily pull that heel past straight up and down. If you can't, you're having a problem. So drive that leg in. Let's get you on a wall and really contracting and relaxing in. And tell, let's just focus on those two pieces tonight and see the, the kind of the implications. It's uh, tomorrow night, we'll talk about how the kind of front musculature, leg musculature, anterior part of the hip really impacts the rest of it. But for tonight, we're going to focus on two pieces. See if you can do that test sitting there. Let's go ahead and have you open up the back of that hip capsule and then drive in, really thinking about leg straight. If your leg goes numb, put a little bend in it. And as soon as you got a little more range, kind of come in a little bit further. Remember our old favorite is you can always grab your leg straight and then rock back and exaggerate that thing, all right? So we'll uh, see you tomorrow at the hot springs.